Poland is a Central European country with a population of approximately 38 million. It also has a highly competitive mobile network market with four mobile network operators arranged in descending size of Play, Orange Plus and T-Mobile. Back in January, I visited Poland with some friends and apart from exploring the country, which I'd recommend you visit, I also got loads of pictures of their mass sites and collected lots of logs of the networks as well so that their configuration could be analysed. Over the coming weeks and months, hopefully not months, but over the coming time I will be releasing videos about the network's radio access network architecture and for this video I will be talking about PLUS, the third biggest network in Poland. Just some background to start off with, PLUS are a multiplayer telecommunications provider which means they offer a lot more than just mobile services so things like fixed broadband, television and so on. They are also the third largest provider by customer number as I've said before and also have a youth brand called Plush with a slightly bizarre looking logo. They also have a number of virtual network operators running on them like Leica Mobile. They operate with standard European Spectrum which I'll speak about on the next slide and use Ericsson and Nokia for their radio access network vendors. So now on to Spectrum, which is quite complicated. On the 800 MHz band, they used to operate with 2x5 MHz using EAR FCN 6425, but because of licensing costs, that is now deprecated and they no longer use it. In the case of 900 megahertz, it's used for 2G, 3G and 4G services, so they've got triple mode 900 megahertz operation. In total, they have 2 by 14 megahertz of 900 megahertz spectrum, of which 2 by 5 megahertz is used for 4G services on EAR FCN 3526. Then there is 2 by 2.8 megahertz, which is used solely for 2G GSM services and then 2 by 6.2 MHz which is has mixed use for 2G as well as 3G UARFCN 3030. Plus Poland possess a rather nice 29.4 MHz paired of spectrum in the 1800 MHz band. However, somewhat unfortunately this is split up into numerous discontiguous isolated segments of spectrum across the band. So starting off is 2 by 19.8 MHz of spectrum at the start of the uplink and downlink 1800 MHz and this is used for their suburban and urban 4G with EAR FCN 1300. The remaining segments of spectrum are used for 2G services with the 2.4 MHz wide uplink and downlink being located roughly in the middle of the uplink and downlink 1800 MHz spectrum. Meanwhile, the final blocks of spectrum that PLUS possess are 7.2 MHz wide in the uplink and downlink directions and, like I said, these are used for 2G services. Having such segmented, isolated blocks of spectrum was not a problem in the 2G days because you could deploy channels of 2G across these segments of spectrum. However, for 4G, where you want large blocks of contiguous spectrum, it really isn't ideal. Meanwhile, 2100 MHz, with their 2 by 14.8 MHz of spectrum in the band, it is either used for 2 by 10 MHz 4G of EAR FCN 350 with then a single 3G carrier of UAR FCN 10762 or that 2 by 10 MHz 
of Spectrum is used for two 3G carriers with UAR FCNs 10713 and 10737. 2600 MHz is 2 by 20 MHz and entirely used for 4G, EAR FCN 2850, that's the FDD, so frequency division duplex. They also have 40 MHz unpaired, which is for time division duplex, EAR FCNs 37900 and 38098. Site spectrum deployment wise, Ultra rural sites are typically 900 MHz only, or by having triple mode 900 MHz with 2G, 3G, and 4G. However, this does mean that they have 2.5 MHz of 4G on them, which, considering they serve just fields and roads and rail, is fine and actually typically perform quite well, or by is a relatively small amount of 4G spectrum. This is why, once you head into anywhere with sort of any vague permanent population, 1800 MHz 4G gets added, which is 2 by 20 MHz, bringing things up to 2 by 25 MHz. Urban sites also typically have U21 alongside the 900 MHz and 1800 MHz, and in fact, some urban sites don't have 900 MHz at all being high band only with just the 1800 and 2100 megahertz. Ultra urban sites typically build on this with 2600 megahertz FDD adding 2 by 20 megahertz of 4G to bring the total up to 2 by 45 megahertz of 4G across the three carriers. Once again these sites don't always have to have U21 on them and in fact likewise not all of them will have GUL09 on them so the ultra urban definer is having 1800 and 2600 MHz 4G and then one of or both of 900 and 2100 MHz. In terms of 4G 2100 MHz this is incredibly incredibly rare and we didn't come across any of it in Poland where we went, although there is some of it about. And likewise, 2600 MHz TDD is also incredibly rare, although there was one site that we just about missed out on visiting. In future, it would be reasonable to expect the 2x10 MHz of 4G on 2100 to become more widespread in dense urban areas, and likewise for the 2 TDD 2600 MHz carriers to become more deployed in dense urban areas in much the same way. So PLUS have all the usual kind of range of site locations and types that you would find in a typical country from lattice towers to poles to hidden installations to microcells to various different types of rooftop installation. Now let's look at the sites. I will start off talking about the GUL09 plus L18 sites, which were by far the most common that we saw. So the first are in central Poznan, and these use Catherine 742265VO2 antennas, and these antennas have two low band ports each and two high band ports each and are therefore wired very simply. The left site has Ericsson radio system remote radios based on the one that's just about visible whereas the site on the right is using Ericsson RRUS12 remote radios. The left site also has an antenna for Nordisk CDMA as well. This next site is using different antennas for 900 and 1800 MHz. The 900 MHz ones are monstrous Catherine 800-104-56-VO2 antennas which are quite high gain, which means that the 900 MHz will have very nice range. I'm not sure what model the high band antennas are because I can't recognise them from the resolution of the image. 
the Ericsson RIUS 12s for 900 and 1800 megahertz are visible behind the antennas on this site as well. The next three examples are all pretty much the same with triple band configurations featuring 900, 1800 and 2100 megahertz. Once again, they feature the Catherine 742265VO2 or similar antennas for the 900 and 1800 MHz, and they also have single high band Catherine antennas for the 2100 MHz. The 900 and 1800 MHz come from RIUS 12 remote radios, meanwhile, for 2100 MHz, there's a master amplifier and otherwise fed from most likely Ericsson RUS on the ground. This example just has GO9 for now, but it will be getting U plus LO9 pretty shortly, which is why I've included it on the schematic. This next site is pretty much identical to the last one, except it does have U plus LO9, um, but otherwise, like I say, exactly the same antenna-wise and configuration-wise. This third one is also the same, but is once again just GO9 on the 900 megahertz side of things for now. Otherwise, all three of these examples have been quite good in terms of being able to see the Ericsson RIUS 12 remote radios as well as the general kind of configuration antenna panel wise. This next site is probably the most complicated one that we'll come across. So let's just start off with the simple side of things. So the middle antenna on each sector is very standard dual band catherine we've seen many times before, and that will most likely have the GUL09 and L18 going through it. There is then a single high band catherine on each side, which will most likely be for the U21, but there is also a single low band catheter on each side which will be for the now deprecated LO8. There are a lot of remote radio units on this, so there are two RIUS 12 per sector which will most likely be for the GUL09 and L18. There is also a third RIUS 12 per sector which I reckon is for the U21, and then there are RIUS 11s on each sector which I would suggest are for the now deprecated L08. There are also other remote radio unit looking objects on the site which I can't quite work out what they are just yet. This site is fairly similar in terms of what it's specified to carry but it does it a fairly different way compared to the last one. So the single low band Catherine for the LO8 is the same, however the remaining technologies are carried on triple band Catherine antennas which have two low ports each and four high ports each and therefore carry the GUL09, L18 and U21. Remote radio wise I've got this down as RIUS11 for LO8 RIUS 12 for GUL09 and L18, and then RUS from the ground for U21. The highest capacity site in terms of 4G that I will be covering is this one, which has 2600 MHz 4G alongside 1800 and GUL09, so it's one of the 2x45 MHz 4G capacity sites. This has dual band Catherine antennas and single high band ones. So I've got the G109 and L18 going into the dual band Catherine antennas and then the L26 going into the single high band ones. There are once again RIUS12 on here which will be for G109 and L18 and there's ERS for the L26 which is most likely an ERS2217. Here is one of the semi-hidden sites, hidden behind the sort of facade of a building a little bit. Triple band Catherine antenna, four high ports, two low, and this had 
Apple 18 on it for sure, and it had GU09 as well. I suspect also U21 to fill up those remaining high ports, but I didn't specifically connect to it. And our last macro site. So this is one of the high band only ones which has U21 and L18 through dual high band Catherine antennas which are four high ports each. It could well be using RIUS mounted in the main cabin or it could be using standard RUS which is why I have not specified which type of radios it is using. The final site that I am talking about is this microcell located in a central business district part of Poznan and perhaps oddly from microcell it was just U09. Usually with microcells you expect them to have high band dedicated carriers on them. Definitely not U09. So a bit of an odd one but it has an Ericsson RIUS 12 there as we've seen many times before for 900 megahertz on these sites. So what does this all equate to performance wise? These plus Ericsson sites do have 256 QAM on them and in good conditions performance was generally very good. On the GUL09 sites clearly if there is like a number of trains on the sector then performance has slowed down a bit but double digits were pretty common. On the sites with GUL09 as well as L18 achieving well over 100 megabits per second was not particularly uncommon. The sites with L26 as well seemed to be quite highly loaded so I didn't get any higher speeds than I got off the GUL09 plus L18 ones. Thanks for watching this video about Plus Poland. I apologise about my voice because I've got a bit of a cold and also I can't talk too loudly because this is like shared housing. I don't want to irritate my housemates. So um, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.